From Norman, Oklahoma, this is Midwest Sports Saturday. Hi, I'm Joey McWilliams on the campus of the University of Oklahoma, and I'm standing in front of McCaslin Fieldhouse. It was the home of the men's basketball team until 1975. It is currently the home of the men's wrestling team, and you see that there's going to be a wrestling match tonight at 6 o'clock, also for women's basketball and also for men's gymnastics. But we're going to talk a little bit about the Midwest today. We'll talk a little Super Bowl as our MidwestSports.net tie-ins are involved and a couple of players in women's and men's basketball that are right around the 2000 mark. So we'll talk about that as we move on. Again, good morning. It's a beautiful day here in Norman. I'm excited to be here. I'm actually on campus today with one of my daughters because it's trombone day at OU and daughter number three, Miss Jayla Quinn, plays the trombone. I actually play a little bit of trombone myself, but it's trombone day up here, so we're gonna combine our time together, a little family time, and some Midwest Sports Saturday as well. So let's talk about the Super Bowl. Super Bowl 54, the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers. It's a five o'clock central start time and it will be on Fox. And there are a number of players on both these rosters that have ties to the MidwestSports.net area. Let's start with the 49ers. C.J. Beathard from Iowa, the quarterback. He's third on the depth chart right now, of course, behind Garoppolo and Nick Mullins as well. But it's possible. You never know anymore if someone's going to see some time out there. Drake Greenlaw, linebacker from Arkansas this season with 64 tackles, one sack, and one interception. One of the three captains on this 49ers team is George Kittle. Tied in. He's from Iowa. He has 85 receptions, has crossed the 1,000-yard mark in receiving yards for the season, 1,053 yards, and five touchdowns for the 49ers this year. Elijah Lee, a linebacker from Kansas State, has three tackles, and DJ Reed, defensive back, also from Kansas State, 11 tackles and a forced fumble. For the Kansas City Chiefs, though, a number of players as well on that roster. Anthony Hitchens, linebacker from Iowa, 51 tackles, a pair of sacks, a forced fumble. Byron Pringle, wide receiver from Kansas State with 12 receptions, 170 yards, and a touchdown for the Chiefs. Xavier Williams, defensive tackle from Northern Iowa, third on the depth chart at right defensive tackle. And then, of course, you talk about uh, the players on this team. Ben Neiman as well, linebacker from Iowa, 35 tackles. But there are three players on the roster who have played their ball actually right behind where the camera is right now at the Oklahoma Memorial Stadium, the Gaylord Family Memorial Stadium. And uh, I, didn't, I didn't want to face that direction because the, the sun would have been you know, glaring into the camera. So I actually have the sun on me because that's all right. You all can handle that. Three players again on this Chiefs team from the University of Oklahoma. I've heard Boomer Sooner many times since I've been on campus already. As a matter of fact, the, the bell that plays, the clock tower that plays here, will play the chimes as you normally expect with a clock, a grandfather clock, and it, then it will ding how many times, what hour it is. It just uh, crossed the 11 o'clock hour here on this Saturday morning, and then it plays Boomer Sooner too. So. That's just a part of being here on campus. James Winchester, he's the long snapper and has been consistent for the Chiefs for four or five years in that spot. Likely to see time, obviously, uh, for uh, the Kansas City Chiefs then on Sunday. Don't forget Damian Williams, running back. Yeah, he's had a good season. 111 carries, 498 yards, five touchdowns for the Chiefs. And, of course, Blake Bell. You remember the bell dozer here at the University of Oklahoma. He plays tight end right now, former quarterback at OU. Eight catches, 67 yards. And that's a look at the uh, the number of players, 13 players from this MidwestSports.net area that are going to be taking part and on the rosters of Super Bowl 54. We'll see how it all turns out. Honestly, I'm going to go ahead and take the Chiefs because my wife would have me do that. Jody's from Warrensburg. Her family's all from Warrensburg, Missouri, just an hour away there from Arrowhead Stadium. And so they've been big Chiefs fans for many, many years. And so I'm gonna go ahead and pick the Chiefs. And you know it's gonna be a high scoring game. So I'm gonna say Chiefs 41, 49ers 31. There we go. And we got the bells going on behind me now. So I hope you can keep on hearing me. Let's talk about some women's basketball first. And we'll look at some rankings there with Division II, Division III, NAI. We'll also uh, talk about the men's basketball here in just a moment. D2 rankings look like this in the most recent poll, the uh, WBCA poll. Well, of course, Drury is still at the top of the polls, 20-0 right now. The Drury Panthers, number one in the country in Division II. And don't forget about the superstar Haley Distelkamp. 
She is nine points from becoming the first player in program history with 2,000 points and 1,000 rebounds. She crossed the 1,000 rebound plateau a couple of nights ago, looking to get that 2,000 points today. And all of the ranked teams, by the way, in Division II today are hosting games. Drury is hosting Maryville today. Also from the MidwestSports.net area, number 16, Fort Hayes State. The Tigers hosting Nebraska Kearney today. Tigers are 16 and three, also 16 and three. Number 22, UCM. I talked about Warrensburg just a moment ago. How about the Central Missouri Jennies? Have won 13 straight games, and that includes a game a week and a half ago in which UCM crossed the 1,000 win mark in program history. We talked about that last Saturday when we were on the campus at Oklahoma City University. So congratulations to the Jennies. Keep on rolling. They're hosting Washburn today. Tough matchup there. Also number 23 in the WBCA Division II Women's Basketball Poll, Southeastern Oklahoma. The Savage Storm fell to Harding on Thursday night and host Arkansas Tech this afternoon. Division III rankings, the WBCA poll, well, only one team in our area is in the rankings of the top 25. That's Wartburg. The number 10 Knights are 16-3 and three on the year and they host Central. Now, I talked about men's basketball, so let's go ahead and go there. Southern Nazarene University and the Crimson Storm has just had some fantastic years in the last two or three years, led by Jonathan Dunn. He is a senior. He and Micah Spate have just been all-stars on this team. Of course, it is a tradition-rich program in college basketball at Southern Nazarene, the women's basketball program with eight national championships, men's basketball program, perennially powerful. And now since both are in Division II, working their way up through those Division II ranks, well, Jonathan Dunn, became the all-time leading scorer at Southern Nazarene on Thursday night and crossed that 2,000, well, it already crossed the 2,000 point plateau, 2,105 point. He got that on Thursday night in a win against Henderson State. We had an opportunity to hear about that from him. Tonight we're joined now by senior Jonathan Dunn, the new all-time career scoring leader here at SNU. And Jonathan, how special of a moment was that for you? Um, it was a good moment, it was a good moment. I'm glad my mother was here and my family. I'm glad to celebrate it with my teammates. Like, of course, I couldn't have done it without them in the past, the past four years. It was great to, it was great, it was a great moment to have that. Jeff Jance is a wonderful guy on and off the court. Have you felt any pressure this year with, as the accolades have piled up um, and you've gotten closer to these different marks? Have you felt any pressure as those have gotten closer and closer? No, not at all. Um, I take it one game at a time. You know what I'm saying? That's something my dad's taught me. Just take it one game at a time and be ready for the next game. Right? You know what I'm saying? You, you think about it too far ahead, you're not going to be prepared for the next thing. And, yeah, man, I'm, I'm speechless about it. It's, re it's really tough. It's really, really exciting, and I'm excited it happened. Uh, how, how big was it for you just individually to go ahead and get it out of the way in the first couple of minutes? It looked like you came out gunning there. <laughs> just go ahead and take care of business and then move on. <laughs> man, it, I really wasn't even thinking about it. I, as soon as the game started, I, told, I totally forgot about it, and then everybody erupted. And I was like, oh. Guess I did it. Yeah, I guess I did it. And I, I totally forgot about it. I was just trying to, I was just trying to get, take what the defense gave me and help my team out the best way I can because I knew eventually it would, it would stop. Mm -hmm. So you know, I have to help them out in different ways. And congratulations again to Jonathan Dunn from Southern Nazarene. Again, the all-time leading scorer in program history. The Crimson Storm now are in a tie for second place in the Great American Conference with that Henderson State team, in which they beat Thursday night. Southern Nazarene hosting Washita today. Also from women's basketball, as we wrap up this abbreviated version of Midwest Sports Saturday, NAIA polls in Division II. Now, the Division II polls have not come out uh, weekly anymore so this poll goes back to mid-January this first day of February it's a beautiful first day of February by the way and the poll looked like this five teams in the top ten from the MidwestSports.net region number two Hastings number three Concordia number six College of the Ozarks number seven Morningside and number nine Dort in the poll there in Division one in NAI women's basketball poll it looked like this Oklahoma City University, with two big wins last week, uh, climbed to the top of the poll at uh, the number one spot as the Masters from California uh, dropping now. Number one in the country, and by the way, this marks the 50th time that Oklahoma City University women's basketball team has held 
the number one spot in the NAI coaches poll. Number nine, Central Methodist. Number 11, Lion. And we will get an opportunity to get to see this Lion Scots program in a couple of weeks. On February 15th, we will originate Midwest Sports Saturday from the campus of Central Baptist College in Conway, Arkansas. And we will prepare you all for the doubleheader between Lion and Central Baptist. Number 15, Columbia. Number 19, Clark. Number 20, William Penn. And number 23, <coughs> Mid-America Nazarene. It's a beautiful day here in Norman. I want to say thanks for watching this edition of Midwest Sports Saturday. I'm Joey McWilliams. Please be sure and like and share this. And please do subscribe to the channel, Midwest Sports Net. We have a lot of programming here on the channel, including high school basketball, as well as sports talk. Enjoying bringing you the summit, in which we get to speak with college coaches, and high school coaches, and athletes, and more. And that's on the summit here on this channel. And then, of course, the flagship show, Midwest Sports Saturday. So I'm going to listen to some more trombones over the course of this day. I know I'm going to hear Boomer Sooner a number of times here in Norman. And by the way, wrestling match here in McCaslin Fieldhouse tonight. Lots of activity that's going to be happening here. So keep it right here on this channel, MidwestSports.net's channel. Have a fantastic day, a great start to your February. God bless you. See you next time.